Checking in now with the Target 12 investigators, our Steph Machado is here to discuss her investigation that aired earlier this week on the rise in catalytic converter thefts. And Steph, I know you got a huge response to that report about this ongoing problem. So what did you find out about the scope of the issue? Yeah, we've been hearing about this problem anecdotally for the past couple of years, both nationally and locally. We knew that in Providence in particular, this crime was really on the rise, even as other types of crimes were decreasing, including violent crime. So I asked every police department in the state for their data on catalytic converter thefts and check out this chart just eight thefts statewide were reported in 2017 up to 1466 so far this year and I gathered this data in October so that number is undoubtedly higher now there could also be multiple converters stolen in each of these incidents now police say the value of the precious metals in that car part are driving this steep increase now Steph you reported that police find it difficult to arrest suspects in these cases with only two arrests in Providence so far this year out of more than 500 reported cases. Why is that? Yeah, so it's a combination of multiple factors, starting with the fact that thieves can just steal this car part so fast. So I want to show you some of the surveillance video we had in our report. This is from Wayland Square earlier this year. It's broad daylight, 11 a.m. A person in a truck pulls into a spot. We have it highlighted there, jumps out. You can see him go under the SUV next to his truck. 30 seconds later, there he is. He jumps back out and he's driving away. So catching someone in the act is unlikely because even if someone had called 911 during this event, the suspect would have been long gone by the time police got there. He's not identifiable from this video. Oftentimes, the crime is not reported until much later once the victim goes to start their car. In this case, uh, after the victim got out of work, it was reported. And police say when they do catch suspects with a converter, it's hard to prove that they're stolen or to, pr or to connect them to one of those hundreds of reports thefts. There's no identification stamp on a catalytic converter, so although we know they're stolen, matching them up with which crime they're connected to is, is almost impossible. The video of it really paints a picture, Steph, and I know you reported there are efforts now to crack down on the businesses that uh, buy these converters, so there's less of a market for the thieves. How's that going so far? Yeah, so there's both a state law and a city of Providence ordinance that went into effect earlier this year um, to require scrap yards or precious metal dealers to collect documentation from the person who's selling them the converter. So the city ordinance is actually stricter in terms of the documents they need, including a bill of sale or proof of ownership of the converter. So far, enforcement still seems to be ramping up here. We found there haven't been any businesses issued fines or violations under either the new state law or the new city law uh, other than one business that got a warning in Providence. Providence police tell me they plan to hand out copies of that new ordinance and do random checks of businesses. The AG's office says they're upgrading their computer systems to be able to better monitor the precious metal dealers they regulate. All right, Steph, thanks so much for being here. And of course, you can watch Steph's full investigation right now on WPRI.com.